Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out a short little iterative game called Pyramid from the God Jam It Game Jam competition that featured a list of commandment style options that developers had to implement into their game in order to fit the criteria for this particular game jam. Now what we're going to be doing in Pyramid is essentially blending some cookie clicker style gameplay with some sort of resource intensive management style gameplay as well. Uh, so essentially we're going to have three different panes to choose from and panes I mean like different areas that we're going to be sorting through, uh, one of which will be housing people and kind of growing them, I guess you could say in essence, or, you know, creating new life that we're going to use as part of our scheme for creating this pyramid. And in the middle, we're going to have the pyramid itself. To the right, we're going to have a rock quarry with which to gather resources. We're going to have human resources, pyramid, rock resources, and then we're going to see if we could do our best to make a pyramid happen in under six minutes with what we're given. And my hands are going to be very tired because it's actually involving quite a bit of clicking. Anyway, I should just jump into things and I will do my best to explain the rest as we go. Uh, it's not terribly complicated, but it might look that way at least at first. So here we go. So here's our main pane. This is the central area where the pyramid's uh, going to be. And you'll notice on the left side of the screen, we've got three bars. Uh, one of which has humans. That's what we're going to be setting up over here with our housing complex. I'm going to start furiously clicking away, and we're going to raise that bar up as high as that goes. Uh, then we're going to swap over to the right side, and you'll notice it says upgrade right there. So what we're going to do is hit that button, and it's going to allow us to generate two resources per click. You'll notice that bar has also gone up on the, uh, the left middle there. And then as soon as that maxes out, we're going to head back over to the other side and see if that one allows us to upgrade, and it does. So we're going to kind of keep balancing these two back and forth, try and get these resources as high as we can, and then we'll actually start working on the proper pyramid. Now, I haven't actually built one successfully yet, so we're going to try our best to see if we can do that. Uh, get another upgrade going. And you'll notice, of course, our timer is ticking down pretty quickly. We don't have a lot of time to work on this. We're down to uh, about five minutes now. Uh, you'll see there's also a thing keeping track of how many floors we've got to build, as well as three buttons, uh, which are essentially representative of the mind state of the characters that we're uh, keeping track of here. So we've got the sleepy state, the happy kind of dancing state, and the uh, being whipped state, which is not very pleasant, I'm sure. Uh, now what we're going to be doing here is trying to manage the player's actual kind of happiness uh, as we go, because you'll see there's sort of that the right side of the toolbar there that's got the balance between green and red. As long as we keep things above the bottom, we should avoid a revolt. But I think if we get things too badly, we're going to end up in a situation where maybe people aren't going to do any work for us. And we obviously want to avoid that, because uh, it's not exactly easy to come across this kind of labor, I'm sure. Uh, so we're just going to keep beating away on the pyramid here. And you'll notice that bar is, of course, filling up slowly but surely. We should reach another precipice in this one. There we go. And we're going to head back over here to the housing complex. We should be able to hopefully get another upgrade going on this side very shortly as we round while well, getting a little bit under the four minute mark. And things do passively increase as well, but not nearly as fast as maybe I would hope. Uh, that is now maxed out. We should be able to get an upgrade here, drop down a few more houses. And uh, we should pay attention, of course, the art to this is very, very intricate. Good attention to detail in general, and the music really well complements it, too. It feels kind of like an old SNES game, actually. Uh, the only real complaint I have with this is just that, and I've noticed this is kind of the case with pretty much every iterative game I've ever played, uh, there's always a time when you can stop clicking in all of those games. And in this one, I think ideally you'd be clicking for the entire six minutes, which I guess, honestly, I'm just proud and glad that there are not more than six minutes to go around because my hand probably couldn't take much more than that. And I'm trying to keep it up, but, you know, I am getting a little tired. I don't want to end up with a case of freaking carpal tunnel from clicking away on this pyramid. Should be able to get one more tier off on this, and then we'll have five floors left, which is not actually looking particularly good for us. Now, if I increase the labor to the bottom button, uh, we will be able to fill the pyramid bar faster, but it will come at the expense of a very, very drastically quickly ticking down, uh, you know, mood meter for our characters here, which we obviously want to balance that as best as possible. Now, I should probably give them a break at some point. Uh, I've noticed that I think you seem to be mostly fine if you leave things toward the middle. But let's try speeding it up, just so you can see how quickly the bar goes down. And I'm gonna guess, if I put it on the sleep meter, it's not gonna go up as... Oh no, it does actually go up just about as fast. 
I actually wasn't expecting that, but you, you get very little work done in this state, so you probably don't want to leave it that way for particularly long. Uh, so we've still got another five floors to do in two minutes here, so I'm going to start double tapping uh, with using both of my fingers in the hopes that maybe we can still make this happen somehow. And in the event that I make it and don't quite have enough time, uh, well, I guess we'll just leave it at that and then you guys can take care of the rest yourselves. Uh, we should probably get a few more people back over here. I was using the arrow keys, by the way, for the uh, people upgrades. So that is something you can, you can either grab it and slide it with your mouse pointer or you can just use the left and right uh, arrow keys. That was actually a pretty long time I spent doing that. Let's, uh, let's mash out some more pyramid if we could. It seems like it's never going to end, actually, when you get toward the end here. You get kind of close and it's like, oh, we're going to come right down to the wire, aren't we? Six minutes to build a pyramid is not ideal. I don't think anyone would think so either. And I think when we get to the very, very end, I might just go nuts and just leave it on the bottom button just to see if that's going to give us the proper jolt we need to make it over the top. Um, I might need people again, actually, but thankfully we can power that bar up very quickly. I'm imagining all sorts of different scenarios that you could kind of set this style of gameplay up to, you know, pyramids and various other construction deals, and maybe making even like a SimCity scenario just completely out of this concept. I could be kind of into that. I think that could be fun. Uh, having a whole bunch of different things you have to build in various ways with different resource management utilities and sliding back and forth trying to keep them all balanced as best as possible. Uh, so we're getting down to the last 30 seconds here roughly. I think I'm going to make it, but what might happen is there might be a little bit of an issue when we get to the very end here. So I think what I'm going to do is right when we get to the last second here, I might just stop the recording. We'll see. We'll see what happens. You know what? I think I'm going to make it with time to spare. All right, here we go. That's it. The journey is complete. So I actually tried to do a complete run of this last time, and uh, I'd actually crashed when I got to the very, very end, so I wasn't sure if that was because it was like down to the last couple seconds or what, but it looks like everything's fine now. I don't know, it's a game jam game. Sometimes that kind of stuff happens. No big deal. So your workers have completed your monument monument and continue to worship you as their deity today is a good day you feel like you could have done better yeah i guess i probably could have i mean i didn't really give anybody a break which is kind of a jerk move uh, but at the same time i did get the job done so you know six minutes for a pyramid i think that's a respectable thing uh, anyway that was pyramid i think that was a kind of a fun little thing i just wish there was a little bit less intense clicking uh, maybe have some way to pause things or have some kind of behind-the-scenes resource management that doesn't involve constant clicking uh, and just have that kind of thing come in spates. I mean, when we're talking about stuff like uh, clicker heroes, essentially, there's only a few moments where you really have to go nuts. Other than that, it's kind of passive clicking to speed up a bar that really there's no time limit on. You can take your time, use the clicking or not. Uh, it's just going to make things more effective for you. In this, it's almost pretty much required uh, and I was mashing, well, for the last third or so of the game, so I imagine maybe if I would have started by mashing at the very beginning, things could have gone a little faster, but by the same token, you know, should I have to? Um, I don't know, it's a very strange thing to try and critique, because there's a lot of very, very subjective elements to something like this. Uh, so I guess the best thing I can do is ask you guys, what do you think? If you want to weigh in, feel free to leave a comment. I am curious, of course, to hear what you think about that. And, of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like as well. You can try this out yourself, too. It is totally free. Uh, just a quick little download. And I'm going to have to go check out some of the other God Jam It Game Jam games and see if there's anything else really cool in there, because I was pretty surprised. This is very high quality for what it is. I mean, it's a simple game, but it's also well done. And I think that's always the best way to go for game jams. Keep things just... Uh, not that ambitious, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all, because this game is, you know, somewhat ambitious, at least uh, for the art and musical style. Uh, the gameplay mechanics themselves, though, you know, keep things manageable. Keep it something that you can finish in a reasonable amount of time and don't go too far over the top, and I think the developers balanced that very nicely and delivered an overall very lovely product. Anyway, that's going to do it for another day, uh, day's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you come back again tomorrow. New episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day. So look forward to bringing you another one then. Hope you like the video, and I hope to see you back then. Have a great night, everybody.